Hi everyone, welcome to episode number 10 of the EOT Glossary, the human dictionary for language teachers who need or want to learn more about EOT terminology. I still can't believe we reached 10 videos, which means I've managed to gather 50 teachers from different nationalities, accents and backgrounds, you know, to come here and help you prepare for your CELTA, DELTA, Trinity TESOL or Master in TESOL. If you haven't watched the series before, every video features five teachers explaining one EOT term each. So instead of reading English teaching dictionaries, you can just come here to learn the terminology in a fun and engaging way. And today, as always, we will see these amazing human beings explaining their terms. So make sure you're ready to take some notes, because here they come. Hey English teachers, I'm Pan from Pan English Teaching and today I'll be talking to you about collocations. What is a collocation? It's a group of words that quite often go together. They are right next to each other and they sound quite natural or correct to speakers who've spoken English for their whole life. Here's one example. Fast food. Can we say rapid food or quick food? Not really. Both of them sound a bit odd. The natural way of expressing this concept is by saying fast food. These words go together. Now you will find many students confusing the verbs make and do and this is because there are lots of collocations with both verbs. We would say do homework, not make homework. And we would also say make a cake, not do a cake. When teaching collocations, remember, there aren't any rules to follow. Students have to memorize all of them. The best way to do that is to help your students immerse themselves into the language. Reading articles, watching videos, listening to speakers from English speaking countries. Every time they come across a collocation, they should write it down in their notebook repeat it many times, write examples, and next time they'll be closer to remembering that collocation. Finally, remember that there are lots of fun ways to teach collocations. Just by typing collocation games on Google, you'll find lots of information and resources to make their learning fun. So this is all for me. Have fun teaching collocations. Hello everyone, this is Bianca from English Bianca. Well, I like to talk about the term developmental spelling. It's like a journey where young learners start from the basics and gradually advance to more complex spellings. At the beginning of this journey, kids spell the words based on how they sound. So you might see them write cat with K instead of C because they hear the k sound. But as they grow and learn, they begin to discover the spelling rules. They realize that certain letter combinations create specific sounds. For example, sh often makes the sh sound in words like shoe. With this newfound knowledge, they become more confident in their spelling. So developmental spelling is all about progress. It's a gradual process of learning and improving spelling skills. Hi. And the term we're going to talk about today is prediction. So prediction is a technique or a learner strategy a learner can use before they listen or read. Learners think about the topic before doing the reading or listening exercise. They can use headlines or pictures accompanying the text in order to understand it better. They can also use their general knowledge in order to think about the topic under discussion. This way they think about it more and it helps them understand what they're going to listen to or read about. This ensures better personalization and also this way students think about the topic more and this way they understand it better eventually. Academic English is the type of English that is used in context reduced situations. So something like a classroom lecture um, or an academic topic um, or even an assignment that is done in the classroom as well and it's important to differentiate between academic English and what we know as normal or kind of informal English or the English that is spoken by most people outside of an academic context and one interesting um, example of this is the TOEFL exam now the TOEFL exam and some other exams they show, they test a lot of academic English, but they also test 
kind of a more normal version of English or what is used outside of the academic context. So some examples might be in an academic lecture, you're gonna be using stronger verbs, you're gonna be using more specific terminology and terminology that might not be as accessible to the everyday speaker. Whereas if you are using kind of general English, this is what's understood by most native speakers. Now, when I personally teach my students and um, when people ask me about what's more important, it depends on your context. A lot of people, they study in more of an academic English and then you can socialize in a different type of English, right? Something more informal. And it's very important to distinguish between these two types of English because people can be good in academic English expression and people can be better at social English expression. It depends on the context and oftentimes of the practice situations that you've been in. Hi everyone! Today I want to talk to you about an ELT term that's very close to my heart. Bilingualism. Bilingualism is the ability to speak and understand two languages fluently. It's an incredible skill that opens up so many doors, both personally and professionally. Imagine being able to chat with locals when you travel to another country, or read books and watch movies in their original languages. That's the magic of being bilingual. It's not just about speaking two languages, it's about understanding different cultures and perspectives. Let me give you an example. I have a friend who grew up speaking both French and English at home. She often tells me how she feels like she has two different worlds inside her. Mind-blowing. <laughs> Each with its own set of expressions, jokes, and traditions. Why do I love bilingualism? Well, first off, it's like superpower. Knowing more than one language boosts cognitive abilities like problem solving and multitasking. Studies have shown that bilingual people tend to have a better memory and even delay the onset of dementia. Plus, in our increasingly globalized world, being bilingual can give you a significant edge in the job market. Employers value employees who can communicate with a diverse group of clients and colleagues. Once again, I want to thank all the teachers who took part in this project. It really makes me proud to know that I managed to build this beautiful community with professionals of all kinds. And we won't stop here as we still have many EOT terms to be covered. So if you want to be in the next video, please send me a message and I can give you more details. Happy teaching!